What's going on everyone? Steven here. Today I'm going to do a bit of a continuation on my last video where we talked about getting rid of the functionality in this game, well if you want to call it functionality, where when you hit the escape key it just closes the game out no matter where you are in the game. It just nixes it, right? So we want to get rid of that. Um, and I'm going to show you a different way to do it this time. Now this is going to be more akin to a traditional approach where um, you know when you have key presses there is a function that handles that right so um, whenever the key is pressed you know the state of the key being pressed you know zero or one false true pressed not pressed and then which key is the one that's pressed right so Unity, since this is a Unity game, they have their own methods for handling key presses. And as we identified in the last video, um, at least to some extent, Unity uses the same key codes as Microsoft's stuff. So the escape key does have 1B as its code. Okay, But if you look in the assembly, you'll see escape equals 27 in the key code enum so 27 in hex is 1b so <clears throat> that's how we can validate that but anyway so um, this is going to be definitely an advanced tutorial so I'm not going to do quite as much hand holding through this so I'll be talking about a lot of things that you know pretty much between all these sites um, or links which I'll leave in the description below. Um, we're going to be talking about Unity's get key down method as well as another Unity method that I don't think it's documented. Um, and then we'll be using stuff from you know within Lua and a cheat table that we're going to write and then there's also an auto assembler um, cheat engine wiki page site whatever right <laughs> so anyway read mem is a function that you can use in the auto assembler all right we're going to be using that and then there's the ce lua.txt documentation if you need that i uh, just wanted to mention that but there's the virtual key codes and then typically in the windows api there is get key state and get async key state as well as other functions for you know handling key presses normally you'd kind of do the same thing with these as what I'm going to do with Unity. So if you're interested in diving into more, um, especially with other games that aren't Unity based, that don't have their own key handling functions or that rely heavily on the Windows native ones, uh, you know, this is the kind of stuff that you would look up. All right, so with that said, I'm going to go ahead and dive in here. So I'm going to open the process with Cheat Engine. All right, and so now we're in the game. We know the behavior that we want to get rid of is hitting that escape key. Um, so what we can do now is, you know, what I did is I went to Google and I said, you know, Unity uh, key handling. And then it brought me here to this get key down. All right, so now what we can do is go mono, dissect mono, right, and then drag that down all right and this is in the unity engine itself okay so we're not in so we're in unity engine we're not in the uh, assembly C sharp uh, assembly file all right so in unity engine we're gonna look for input so unity dot input okay normally you could perhaps search for this stuff if you can't find it or whatever the searching can take a while but anyway and then methods, we've got the get key down. So if we scroll down here, we see get key down. We see another get key down. We see get key down int, get key down string, and a bunch of other key related stuff. All right, the one that's documented here is the string name get key down, which is this one. However, what we can do now is, um, you know, so basically we want to detect the key being pressed. That's the point that we're starting from now right 
instead of digging around in the code and looking for stuff related to escape, that was one solution. Now we want to see how to find our way to the point in code that whenever we press the escape key, the waterfall of execution happens that ends up closing the game. So what we can do now is we can JIT this method, all right, and we can hit F5 to, you know, set a breakpoint there, and you see our symbols go away. All right, so now what we can do is just come in the game. I'm not going to push escape because that would presumably close the game if this breakpoint doesn't break. I'm pushing keys. Nothing's going on, so this function doesn't appear to be the one that we want. So go back here, I'll hit F5 to get rid of that breakpoint. Let's try the next one down. Uh, where's that at? Get key down. All right, so we tried that one. Now let's try this one. JIT. Whoops, we need to mono activate symbols again so that it knows what to do from this here. So, okay, had to step away for a moment there for a phone call. So kind of picking up where we left off here. Uh, I went ahead and JITted this method, so I'm here, I'm going to place a breakpoint and boom it popped immediately and that's because this is a loop so if you're familiar with watching for key presses you know it's a continuous loop you know so the key press comes into the function uh, has it been pressed or not so you'll have a bunch of different functions sending key presses to these functions um, with a state of is it pressed or not uh, or that check will happen at some point and so that's what we've hit right here. So between these two, this is the one that we're interested in. And we can see that, you know, we get the setup here and then a call to this input key, get key down int, which we see right here. So get key down int, that kind of tells us what we're in for, perhaps, that we can expect to see the number, the numerical value of the key that's being pressed. Perhaps that's what it's checking for. So is the key down? You know, yes, it's down. Okay, now we're going to find out which key it is, right? That's what it looks like we're doing here. So what we can do now is, um, now that we're in this spot, <clears throat> we see in RCX there's 3, 1. So if we were to go here and look for 3, 1, what do we see? The one key. All right. So what we could actually do now is, you know, step through all this or step over and just find our way to the function, to the caller that, you know, got this whole thing moving. So which function is the function that is, that sent this key to get key down, All right? Um, and so we can find that out. What I want to do is get down in here into, you know, get key down int, and we'll poke around in there because that's where I want to find, uh, or where I ultimately want to create a hack to do what we want to do because that hack um, with, you know, minor modifications can persist across other Unity games, right? So we're going to do ourselves a favor here if we want to hack other Unity games and perhaps get this bit of work done. So what we could do is trace this, right, and just to tell you what we're going to do essentially, I'm going to get the state of the key as it pressed, I'm going to get the key that was pressed, and then we're going to get the caller, the function return address that we're interested in that sends that particular escape key press, right? So that's the cheat that we're ultimately going to create. But what we could do is determine at this point, you know, which key is pressed. And, um, you know, let's just go ahead and let's see, step is F7. Let's hit F7, 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 F7. All right. And so at that move, now we're going to actually let's step into this call. So now we're in this get key down int. Okay. And going to step through all this. Eventually we get to this call here. We're going to step over that. All right, so now we have this value of zero in RAX. All right, and then in RSI we see 3, 1. We see that key. 
All right, so RCX also has a bunch of zeros, but as we keep going here, we see that this move zero extended AL into RAX. So presumably this is gonna put either zero or one, right? So is the key pressed, yes or no? All right, so, you know, yeah. And RSI looks like it contains the key code. So at this particular juncture is where I'm gonna to want to create the hack that I want to do so but what we're gonna do instead is we see that you know just watch RAX all right so I'm gonna start stepping through here we're gonna to return to this all right and return to the caller so look here camera fade control update all right so this particular one here all right this was the call and now we've returned here now once we get back in here there's a test on EAX which has zero all right so if it's one then you know this one gets moved into here or let's just say if it's not zero so jump if equal to here otherwise it's going to move this into there and then proceed on so we have this check right here that's happening so presumably this setup here, look, 3-1, we identified as the key code. So that's putting that in ECX, right, setting up the call. And then we identified from the call that we saw, you know, which register that key was in. And now that we're back in here, we're at this test, all right? So camera fade control, um, what was that key code? It was 3-1. Yep. And we saw it's the 1 key. Okay. So if we just go to view breakpoint list and delete breakpoint. Let's do that. And let's just debug run. Resuming execution. Let's hit the 1 key and see what happens. All right. It just blanks out the screen. All right, so there we can see that this watch, you know, this loop for it's looking for this key press, right? And if it's one, then that's what it does. So now what we want to do is go back. So, and then we can go back again, back, just back space. Okay. So back in this point, all right, at this particular instruction, which is directly after this one, we have at least two things okay we have which key is pressed and we have has that key been pressed and at this particular juncture we can influence the value of has the key been pressed because that's what is in RAX presumably right so now what we can do is we could do uh, well I'll hit F5 on this particular instruction and then I'll go view breakpoint list and on here I'll set a condition Okay, we'll go easy, and then we'll say if RAX is equal to 1, okay, that's when we want it to break. So now if we close that and we hit debug run, it's executing again, and we're not breaking on this because we haven't pressed the key yet. Well, what happens if we push the escape key right now? Let's do it. Boom, we hit. Okay, so now that we've done that, look at RAX, it's 1. And both RDX and RSI contain the key code, 1B. So here we have those two things. This is the escape key, right? So now what we can do is, uh, let's step through. Debug, step is F7, step over is F8. I'm just going to hit F8. Okay, now we're back in this get key down, and now we should return into the function that originally set this off. Manager VR input update. Now, if you'll recall from the last video, this is the exact spot that we needed to modify, you know, within this method to get rid of the functionality, you know, getting rid of that escape key. So look, here, we got the escape key code being put in ECX. This is just like that other function we saw. 
all right and now we've returned and we have this test so because we're here we've returned to this point where these arrows show we haven't run this test yet so now what we can do to test our theory and we could just create a patch right here in this game right we could if we just wanted to do it for this game we could uh, I'll double click on this go see to copy and then we'll just XOR which is a two byte instruction that's cool so instead of testing EAX it's just going to XOR EAX and make it equal zero okay before um, so well actually no test at all happens there so instead of a, a test happening um, you know there may be some state that we would need to modify for in terms of the flags but we can look at the flags here and see um, you know what the deal is so if we XOR this right here zero flag is zero what we can do is debug run okay and we're still running. We hit the escape key, right? So now if I hit escape again, we're back in that, but I can go debug run. Perfect. So that's a patch that we could apply here in the game. So then we could just bring up an auto assembler script, reference by symbol name, and then boom, have our patch. So if I go back here, I'm going to actually change this back to test. All right. Go back. And uh, let's go to address Unity Engine and put get key down int. All right, so we want to go back to this point where the breakpoint is, right? And this is where we want to do an injection. So now what we can do is um, we have one more thing that we need to figure out, and that is the return address that we are interested in. And a quick way that we can go ahead and do that is you know you can read stuff down here through the stack or we could go ahead and go um, right after that instruction what we'll do is do a break and trace instructions actually we want to trigger that breakpoint first okay so I have that breakpoint set I'm gonna hit the escape key boom we've triggered it here I'm going to do a break and trace. We'll save stack snapshots. We need to do that, and then I'll do step over instead of single step. All right. And so now what we need to do is go debug run. All right. So because we were paused right there when rex was one, because we hit the escape key, we're going to do that break and trace directly after resuming execution, which you know what we did is end up back here at this point right but now what we can do is this we can look at the stack okay and so at this particular instruction right here we should see as we go through the stack we should find the return addresses for these callers okay so what we need to check is that the escape key press is coming from the method that we're interested in and not some other method that's using the escape key because there could be other methods using the escape key right we want to make sure that we're handling just the one that made this particular call so what we can do is look at this right here 17E0655D that's a return address all right whenever a call happens right um, in that process, a return address is placed onto the stack so that after the call is finished, execution knows where to go back to. So that address is what we're going to be looking for. Specifically this address, right? Because this is the one from here, that VR update that makes that call, right? So at this point, we want to check for where this address is on the stack. So 17E06783. So if we go looking through the stack here, we'll find it here at RBP plus 48. So as things are popped off the stack and cleaned up, eventually it gets back 
to here where that look manager VR input update 143 so now we have the things that we need to make our cheat all right we're in the we're in the right location we have the key code we know that we want it to be one signifying that it's pressed and now we have this caller right or the return address rather from this caller the one that we know we want to influence so now that we have that this is where like I'll keep a pad of paper next to me and actually write this stuff down because <laughs> it's super handy but what I'm gonna do here now is I'm gonna go back okay and actually go to address alright so on this particular spot I'm gonna go debug run I can't remember if it's paused or not debug um, or just click here and then <clears throat> excuse me F5 to get rid of that I'm gonna go tools let's see okay debug run Ooh, why is it not running anyway alright so it looks like the game is getting ready to crash but it's okay we've got what we need right now so uh, maybe I'm just in a funky state uh, let's go tools, auto assemble, template, AOB injection, and it's not going to find an AOB because there's uh, quite a lot of them that have this set up and finish, so it's okay, it's not a big deal. So what we can do is keep a couple of notes for us. We can go rex equals uh, is pressed. Zero, no, one, yes right so is the key press that's what is in rex rsi equals key code 1b for escape and then finally we saw that rbp rbp plus offset 48 is a return address of uh, you know caller whatever of caller and then we can put it there manager VR input update plus 143 okay so these are some good notes for ourselves all right we can get rid of that AOB scan um, so we're gonna have to do a few things here before we get into it all right here in the code I want to actually do the assembly right so the first thing that I want to do is push F, right? So we'll push our flags, pop F. All right, so after that, what we want to do is compare what's in RAX, but I'll just do AL, right? The low byte of RAX. Um, we'll compare AL with one. All right, so is the key pressed? Right. Do we have one? Because that's when we're interested in modifying the value. Jump if not equal, at forward. We're going to use anonymous labels here. Okay, Okay. so if the key is pressed, now we want to see if um, SI contains 1B. So is it the escape key that's being pressed? If it's not, then continue normal execution. All right. The next thing we'll need to do is push RBX, pop RBX, because we're going to use that register. So now what we need to do is we're going to, uh, I'm just going to write some pseudocode here. What we need to do is um, have EBX equal return address we're interested in. Okay. And so then what will happen is we'll do the compare of what's in RBP plus 4.8, right? plus 4, 8 with EBX. Okay, so because we have symbol names here and we know that when we load a Unity game in memory, it's dynamic, so we can't reference it by module plus offset, that address is going to change every time we restart the game. So we need to get that address. And we'll do that in just a second. So once we do that, um, you know, drop if not equal at forward, otherwise we're going to check for that. And then if that's not equal, so if it's not the return address we're interested in in that location, we'll jump 
and resume execution. If it is, we're going to XOR RAX RAX to make it equal zero. So that's going to be the hack. And this is going to happen at the Unity engine level. So presumably we save the script and with some minor modifications, we can check for other key presses in relation to other games, right? So that's the bulk of the assembly um, that we're going to need. So I'm going to get rid of code there and get rid of code there because I don't need it. I'm going to rename new mem to, um, we'll go control R to rename new mem to uh, get key down int mem, <clears throat> replace all. Okay. Um, because that couldn't find uh, a good AOB, we see here that the references at inject are off, plus we don't want inject to be our thing. So what we'll do first is um, we'll define, we need to define, it would be inject as, uh, what would it be, the unity engine um, get key down input get key down int plus 74. So I'm looking right here at the line that's highlighted. Unity engine input get key down int plus 74. All right. And so for us to be able to reference that symbol properly, what we're going to have to do is go Lua. And then I'm just going to go ahead and set back up assembly. All right. We're going to need to do the launch uh, mono. Uh, gosh, what is it? Uh, data collector, that's it. Mono data collector. All right, so that's going to start off launching the mono data collector, which is the same as, you know, activating mono features in the main CE window. But before anything, we need to do the if syntax check and then return in so it doesn't run this whenever we save the script to the cheat table. All right, <clears throat> so now that we've got that, I'm going to go ahead and do what we're going to need to do in this part right here. Return the address, or get the return address we're interested in. All right, and so to do that, I'm going to create a variable called ESC for escape. I'm going to allocate memory for, and um, just remember all the stuff is between these references or resources that I'll have in the description. So with allocate memory four, we're allocating a small bit of memory, and then I'm going to do adder for address. And what I'm going to do is get address. And I'm going to get the address of the symbol of over here, manager VR input. So I'm going to go manager VR input update plus 143. All right, that's going to get the actual address, the number of the address, right, that this symbol is at or that it's referencing and then finally I'm going to write integer ESC adder so it's going to write the number that it gets the address number into this place in the memory that we allocated and the last thing that we're going to need to do is register a symbol of ESC all right, for that location in memory so that we can reference it now in here in the uh, script here. All right, so basically this gets us our address. That's what that whole setup is. All right, so also now what we're going to do is instead of inject as the name, I want to make it something like, um, let's go control R to rename inject to let's do like uh, unity engine input get key down int right unity engine input get key down int perfect that's what I'm going to use for that I know that's a little lengthy but whatever and it renamed the injection point as that here in this comment <laughs> that's all right all right, so we've got it defined now, and that's all going to work fine. It knows what it needs to do for that. This register symbol here, I'm actually going to move that up. 
to under the define. All right, so we register that symbol and then we're doing our allocation here. But instead of allocating there at that, you know, around that spot in memory, you know, we don't necessarily have to specify, but since Cheat Engine did it anyway, we can just copy this symbol name now and put it here because it's going to reference this spot in memory, right? Where that's concerned. All right, so now what I'll do is register symbol get key down int mem, okay? And that's so that we can, um, you know, reference that for this define that we're going to have here. Escape key, and I'll tell you what this is going to do in a second. Int mem plus 200. So if you've seen my other videos as of late, you kind of know what I'm going for here. <clears throat> All right, so we're allocating memory. We're registering a symbol to that so that we can then reference it with this define. So I'm creating a place in the allocated memory. So 200 as an offset away from the base that our new alloc is taking place, right? Uh, and then registering a symbol for that place because what I want to do now is use an auto assembler function. Okay, so now what's going to be placed into this spot in memory is the result of doing read mem ESC four bytes. So we're reading the memory from this location now for our script. All right. So I know that's a big setup. It's probably a bit confusing for you if you haven't seen it yet, but you know, and there may be shorter different ways to, to do it, but this is just the solution I came up with initially, right? So it works. That's cool. <laughs> Alright, so now what I need to do is here with this have EBX um, equal the return address, we can get rid of this and we can say EBX um, or move into EBX D word PTR and then escape key. All right, so it's going to read this address. It's going to read the value in it, put that in EBX. And now we're going to compare that with what's in RBP plus 48. And if they're the same, then we know that that is, that the key press that came into this function is, its origin is the place that we're interested in. Okay. So then we pop RBX, jump if it's not equal. Otherwise, we're going to take that one out, make it a zero, make it seem like that key wasn't pressed per that caller, All right? So <clears throat> now that we've got that, the last thing that I need to do is, uh, let's see, plus seven, four. All right, we just need to unregister stuff here. So escape key. We're unregistering that. We can unregister this. Okay, so we've got that unregistered. We've got that unregistered. And then this unity key down int, that's being unregistered. And I think what we, we can also unregister ESC from here. Um, so that would be on the outside. And then perhaps we can dealloc ESC. <clears throat> I think I can do that even though we're mix matching Lua here with this. Um, but this should be what we need. And if we wanted, we could even put an assert uh, at the top of this and you know make sure that at this location is these bytes plus seven four four eight eight B all that blah 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 RCX RBP just making sure that things line up here yeah you can just go ahead and assert that try to keep all the other stuff from happening if these bytes aren't what they should be so if the game updates or unity updates or something like that right 
All right, so now what we should be able to do is go file assign to current cheat table. All right, and hopefully I didn't forget anything here or mess it up. So now if I enable that, boom, there's our code injection. We follow it. Here's our code. All right, follow it back. And now we're back from there. And so now, hopefully, you know, since the game is stuck in this particular state, if you breakpoint list, there is no breakpoint there. I did try running it. It's hung. Okay, no big deal. So I'm going to just disable that. I'm going to close the game. And now I'm going to reopen the game. And once I reopen the process with Cheat Engine, we're going to see if the script works. Yes. Okay. All right, so we're in there. I'm going to enable. It is enabled. Let's hit the escape key. I'm going to hit escape. Boom, it's working as intended without the bug of closing it out. Right? I hit the escape key here and it takes us back to here. But if I hit escape, everything's good. Okay? So maybe it wanted from the home screen here, if you were to hit escape, then it would escape out. But maybe on other pages, it wouldn't do that. And, you know, that's a whole different thing, you know. So anyway, now I'm going to turn that off, come back in the game, hit escape. And it's frozen. So uh, I'm not sure why it's frozen at this point. Um, there may be something. Actually, let's see if our user-defined symbols. Nope, the symbols are gone. Everything's toast. So, not quite sure why I'm getting the freezing behavior. That's something that I would have to go check out. Oh, actually, it looks like all this still exists. Nope, actually, because we didn't go to the new location of things. So, anyway, let's try go to address. Um, we still have this referenced. So we should be able to go there. We're there. Okay, it wrote everything back the way it would have been. All right, so yeah, not quite sure why at the moment it's freezing, but so that'll be something to perhaps figure out next. But anyway, you get the gist of what's going on here. So um, I'm going to upload this particular script to my GitHub. So if you want to have it, you can do that. And then I've got resources, uh, links for things that I'll talk about in the description as well. So give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll talk to you on the next one. Take care.